Alright there you beautiful legends, well as you can see I am back out at night, however tonight's adventure will have to wait for another day as this episode we have a delicious mussel catch and cook. I go diving for some delicious tasty fresh mussels honestly, getting stuff fresh from the ocean is just fantastic. I'm having to record the uh, intro a bit separately unfortunately because the intro I recorded on the day was corrupted so yeah here we are, farewell. It's another excuse for me to get back out onto the shore and uh, on a go on another adventure. But yeah, hope you enjoyed today's episode. It has one of the most memorable moments for myself from over the summer while I was out diving. So yeah, enjoy. Love all you legends. Can't thank you all enough, honestly, for your support, for watching the video, for the likes, comments, shares. Keep it up. Love you all and enjoy. Hello again you beautiful legends and welcome back to another foraging adventure. Today visibility was absolutely spectacular. We had a good six to eight meters plus in most areas. Yeah, it was just such a spectacular day. And this compass jellyfish to greet us out in the water was just one of the finest specimens of this type of jellyfish I had seen all summer. Absolutely stunning. I just absolutely love the way they glide through the water and just how the light shimmers off the bell on their heads. There were an absolute ton of bait fish around today as well. Thousands and thousands of small fry and sand eel just absolutely and utterly everywhere. I've never seen so many before. Absolutely and utterly loads of them. And later on it will become apparent as to why they were here. But we'll have to uh, wait a minute for that one, but yeah. This was the main reason of why we were here. Mussels, absolutely loads of them. As you can see, a lot of them were far too small to keep, and I've always mentioned this in previous foraging videos, whenever you're taking shellfish like this from an area, don't take loads from one clump. I scouted out the area, looked around, and I would basically pick a couple of the larger ones out from each sort of clump, and that's so the population doesn't get wiped out. If you hit an area really hard and wipe out a group of them because they'll breed in clusters, you'll wipe out that cluster, and it is a real shame. We don't want that, so yeah wasn't particularly deep where I was, I'm only within about one to two meters of water for the most part where I was able to find most of my mussels, but yeah. As a sort of a general rule of thumb as well, I always like to measure them up against my thumb. About a good thumb size for an adult male is how big you want your mussels to be for the most case as well. Yeah, I find the uh, best way to get them off the rock is to basically grab a hold, twist and pull when they do come off quite easily. There are also quite a lot of small blennies in the area as well. This one uh, decided to have a swim away from a big thundering oof who came over it. Yeah, back out into the bay a little bit more now, heading out to some deeper water. Still loads of sand eels around and some nice balamras there hiding under the rock. Yeah, led me to a nice little patch of uh, mussels though, so that was very good. And there were hundreds of starfish around. I won't have hours of footage for you guys just of uh, starfish. These are spiny sea stars. Yeah, there were a lot of them around today. Absolutely loads. Yeah, I didn't particularly have to go very deep for the mussels today, which was quite nice. A lot of them that I collected were fairly shallow. Yeah, some nice big ones uh, throughout these clubs here. Go on, sunshine. Go on, you can get it out. Go on. There we go. Yeah, some nice big ones, which was good. And then again, back out into the bay. Decided, after I collected a few, it would be a bit of fun to go and explore. See what else was out there. Again, as I mentioned, there were a lot of starfish around today. Absolutely loads in uh, clumps like this, just on the outcrops of rocks. Which made a good bit of diving practice for myself as well. Just to go and uh, pick them off and secure them. Give you guys a bit more of a show and tell. Fortunately, I decided to disturb this one during his lunch so yeah he went back in there were also a lot of people as you can see on paddle boards and stuff today i didn't bring my spear gun which was unfortunate as you'll see very shortly if you keep on watching as to why but yeah drop this fella off 
get him back, get him gone. And yeah, headed out into some deeper water in just a second there, just to see what else was around on the reef. Found this lovely example again of accomplished jellyfish. There were quite a few of them around, and they're always lovely to see. But yeah, out of the corner of my eye in just a second, I caught a nice shimmer of silver, which led me to one of my most stunning moments and memorable times over the summer while I was out diving. So I'll leave you with that one and I'll let you enjoy the next couple minutes of clip. Heading on back in now, folks. I could see why these guys were taking shelter in the uh, shallower water there. There were a lot of hungry mouths to feed out in the uh, deeper part of the bay there. But yeah, stay tuned. Heading on back in. But the next part is the lovely catch and cook from all those fresh mussels I have just picked. Stay tuned. I hope you enjoy. All right there, folks. So we've had our mussels now soaking in some water. I forgot my bucket unfortunately, so what I've done is I've made up some seawater using 6 litres of water and then 35 grams of uh, specialised marine salt. If you ever do this, don't use an iodized salt, don't use like normal table salt or rock salt, it has to be specific special marine salt for this, otherwise you will kill whatever's in there. But yeah, aerator is on, been in there for about 24 hours now to purge, they are looking good. I haven't seen any of them open yet, so hopefully they're okay, but they are, yeah. These were all separate and they actually started to stick together. So there'll be a whole big clump down there, so yeah. They should be fine. What I'm going to do next is scrape all the barnacles and stuff like that off of them. Get rid of the beard on it, which is uh, these tendrils. I think they're called the bis biscuits or something like that. I have to find out the proper word and terminology for it. What they use to cling onto the rocks for, get rid of all that discard it all. I'll show you the cleaning process in a second. Gonna get these drained off, gonna move over to the kitchen and we'll be back in a mouth. Cleaning our barnacles, cleaning our barnacles, cleaning our muscles of barnacles in the beard. So this is what I was on about. This bit here, that is called the beard. That bit we want to get rid of. Put my knife down a second. That's pretty easy to do, just literally pull straight off, like so. Make sure any little bits have gone. For the barnacles, the best thing to do, back of a knife, and just 
scrape it off and you can see they just literally come straight off obviously just be very careful of fingers yep just pops off just like so but yeah you can even break them off with your fingers but you will end up uh, with some nice cuts so what i'm going to do now clean the rest of the muscles that are in the bucket just there get them popped in there we'll get back to you guys shortly Right there folks, we're about halfway through doing our muscles now. Still got a load left, but you can see why we purged them. You can see all the little bits, bar maybe the seaweed, have come out at the bottom. And exactly why we scraped them off to get rid of all the barnacles. So yeah, I'm gonna carry on cleaning these guys up and then we'll get back to you for the cook up. Wow, our lovely muscles have now been cleaned off. These are absolute crackers in here. No, for next time though, try to pick some without as many barnacles on because it makes the job a lot easier cleaning them. But yeah, some lovely mussels in there. I'm going to do them a little bit of a French style. So I'm going to make a bit of a uh, stock out of the carrot, celery, shallots with some smoked garlic as well. I'm going to get another butter, some olive oil. We've got some lovely white wine as well to steam them in. Normally I would um, take you guys all through the process of what I'm doing and eating, but got family at the most so excuse me there that i'm not going to do show you the whole thing but yeah i'll get it all chopped up get it put on and we'll show you the final product okay and we'll give you guys a nice little close-up there we've got about half a cup of wine we're going to add that in we we'll turn the heat up nice and high Get that steam in, add a little bit of hot water in. You don't need that much. Basically what we want is for the muscles to steam through. You can see all the steam coming out. That's exactly what we're gonna need to, uh, to cook everything in there. But yeah, there you go, nice and steamy. So yeah, we'll grab our muscles now and very carefully I'm just gonna add them in. Just be careful of the steam, you don't wanna burn your hand or anything like that. Give them a nice quick stir. We'll give them about four or five minutes, somewhere around there. I'll get back to you guys in a sec and show you what we've got. All right there, folks, we are back. I'm just gonna turn the heat down. It's had about four minutes now, so I'm just gonna very carefully, don't wanna burn myself, just bring it off the heat a second. Open it up. Oh, that smells so good already. Just gonna give them a stir and make sure they've opened. See what we've got. It might need a little bit longer. Yeah, they've just about started to open. Sometimes giving them a quick shake will make them open up. Giving them a stir can do the same thing as well. Some of them in there have opened and there's a couple down and around there that haven't. So yeah, we'll just give it another minute that back on, for that steam to stay in and the heat to stay in there. Yeah, give it another minute and then hopefully we should be good for the next step. All right there folks, we've given it another minute. I don't want to cook it any longer because I don't want the mussels to turn to rubber. If you overcook them and there's a very fine line between them being cooked and overcooked, they will um literally just go really rubbery like bullets and they'll be absolutely horrible. I'm gonna turn the heat down on that one for a sec. Keep it on, so we'll need it in a moment. All I'm gonna do now is take this over to the sink, carefully strain it out, and I'll uh, be back in a second and show you what I mean. All I've done there, folks, so I'm gonna use gloves because the bowl's gone quite hot. This is the liquid. All I'm gonna do is pour this back in, apart from the very bottom amount, just to make sure we don't put any grit back in. Probably should have done this through a strainer just to make sure. But I'm not too fast. The muscles should be pretty good. There shouldn't be too much in it. Just do a tiny bit more. 
There we go. And what I'll do is I'll show you why we leave a little bit at the bottom. So yeah, as you can hopefully see down there, some of that brownier stuff, that's all like the little bits of grit and sand that were in the muscles as they open. So this is exactly why we uh, don't want that little bit in. It will ruin what we're cooking. All right there, folks. I actually noticed there was a tiny little bit in there. There's a very small amount, so I've just put it through a strainer. And then I'm gonna pour it back in. Yeah, it's always good practice, just to make sure. Very fine mesh strainer, drain it out. Just as a double safety measure. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add about half a bottle of the wine in. There you go. So yeah, this is just gonna be our cooking sauce. What I'll do is I'm gonna reduce this by about half, and then I'm gonna add, I've got about 300 mils, just under 300 mils of double cream left. So I'm gonna add that to it as well. And then reduce that down so it's nice and thick rather than runny. And then we'll be uh, ready to add our mussels back in, and then ready to serve. Right there folks, what I will show you, so this is what we're looking for, making sure that the muscles are nice and open, like this, etc. These muscles, the ones that haven't opened, oh, they're pretty hot. Let's give them a quick tap on the side. Pretty hot for a moment. And if they don't open, yeah, that one hasn't opened. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through these and any that don't open like that, I'm gonna discard them. Basically, they're either dead or there's something wrong with them. But whatever it is, we don't want to eat anything that's closed. So don't try and force it open because it's going to give you a very, very upset stomach if you do. All right there, guys. I only managed to find one that wasn't open. So hopefully I've done, not done too bad a job. Reduce the sauce down now. So now I'm going to reintroduce the mussels, give it about one minute, and then I'm going to serve it. All that goodness out. And look and smell. Absolutely and utterly amazing. Give you guys a nice little close up shot of them in there. Look at that. Oh. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah, the sauce was uh, salty enough as it was. Didn't need to add any uh, added seasoning into it. As I say, a lot of the time with mussels, because they hold a bit of salt water in them when they shut, there's enough brininess in it that you just don't need to add anything. The smell is phenomenal, honestly guys. It is just smelling fantastic. Ooh, it's nice and hot. But yeah, there we go. The final product. Some lovely, freshly caught mussels. Literally picked them yesterday, purged them for about 24 hours, and now they are being served. That is just to die for. Hope you've enjoyed another episode here. Yeah, it's been a, uh, a wondrous time. Shame I didn't have my spear gun with me. Yeah, as I found a nice big school of bass, so that would have been absolutely excellent to be able to uh, catch one of those for the dinner table as well, but maybe next time, I wasn't expecting it. But yeah, as I always say, stay safe, have a lovely day, and I'll catch you on the next adventure.